One day, around a year after the incident with Satanta and the boys' troop of the Red Branch Warriors on the hurling pitch, Crua Magnesa received an invitation from a mighty smith and craftsman called Cullen, who lived outside of Imamaka. It was tradition that every man who had a name and owned land in Ulster invited the king and his men to a feast once a year, and so the invitation was expected and very welcome to the king. It was a great honor to Colin, who also had the chance to show off his best work to the king during this event. The king asked a few of his closest men to come with him, since Colin had asked for not too many visitors, for he was a humble and not too wealthy man. Kroa set off and came across the hurling field where Satanta and the boys were playing games and challenging one another. The king didn't need to watch the boys for long to see that Satanta won every challenge against all of the other, mostly older boys, at ease. Once again, he was proud of his nephew and without further ado, invited him to come with him. Satanta agreed but stated that he first would need to finish playing his current game of hurling, since the game was him on the one side and all of the other boys on the other side. And he didn't want to concede, for he was sure he was just about to win. Kroa frowned, but agreed. Since Cullen would be waiting, he decided to go ahead with his men, and Satanta would have to follow the chariot's tracks after them, when he was ready. After a long journey, Kroha arrived at Colin's place. They greeted each other like old friends, and Colin introduced his massive hound, who was a giant of a beast. Colin was so proud. He had raised the hound from the day he was but a little puppy, and now he was the best guard dog anybody could wish for. He alone would be able to defend Colin from anyone who wished him ill. And that was necessary, for he was too far outside of Imimaka for Kroa's men to protect him and the little he had in case of an emergency. So the beast was the only means of defense he and the small household had. After the men started to enjoy the feast, Cullen asked Kroa whether he was waiting for any more company. But Kroa, who just thought of the dog and completely forgot about his nephew, replied that everyone was there and that Cullen could release his hound to guard the house for the night. Cullen took every last one of them in sight and set his hound loose so he might guard them all from unwelcome guests. Kroa looked again at the beast and didn't doubt for a second that this massive hound was as strong as a few dozen men. He certainly was big enough. He was as high as a horse and twice as white, with sharp and long teeth and claws. The mere sight of the monstrous being could turn the bravest man into a coward. The hound lay down in front of the house, resting his enormous head on his deadly paws, and stared into the night, ready to tear apart everyone who didn't belong. While the company was happily chatting and feasting, Setanta finally made his way to Cullen, playing with the Surly and the Slater, like he did when he first went to Imanmaka. Some things never change. But when he arrived at Cullen's place, he was greeted in a different manner than he expected. There was this monstrous hound standing in front of him, and letting out a blood-curling howl that echoed far through the night. The guests of the feast inside of the house went dead silent. What was that? A howl like that could only mean one thing. The hound was about to tear someone apart. Suddenly the king remembered his young nephew and grew pale. What had he done? He had deemed the child to death. The whole company rushed outside, 
awaiting to find the dead Satanta, torn apart by the mass of beast. But when they came outside, they found a scene they would have never expected. A moment before, when the hound was coming at Satanta, the boy had taken his hurley and sleater, and hit the sleater at the hound with as much force as he was able to muster, flinging it towards the open mouth of the attacking beast. The sleater flew into the hound's throat, causing the massive beast to choke. Then, Satanta took the beast's head and dashed it against the stone again and again, until the skull of the beast was crushed and the hound lay dead before him. As massive as the hound was, it sounded like thunder when he hit the ground. And when the company arrived at the scene, they were stunned seeing Satanta unharmed standing over the dead body of the massive guard dog. And while Crowell was overjoyed to find his nephew alive, Colin was devastated about the loss of his precious hound. He wept over the body of the faithful beast, who would now protect him from burglars and wars. Without that hound, his livelihood was all but secure. Satanta felt terrible for what had happened. He was determined to make up for what he had done. He knew that there was no dog like this in all of Ireland, and that it would take a lot of time to train a new dog to replace this one. And so, Satanta stood in front of Colin and vowed to be his guard dog himself, to sleep in front of his house and protect him from any danger day and night until Colin would be able to raise a new hound. Croha was proud. Colin accepted. And so, from that day on, Setanta became known as Ku Colin, the Hound of Colin. And for one whole year, until a new pup was raised to be a guarding beast, Ku Colin came down from Eamon Maka every evening, circled around Colin's home and then lay in front of his door with one eye open all night to guard Colin and all he had. And any poor soul who dared to wish Colin ill during this time probably wished the hound back instead of the fearless and faithful young warrior. And this is how good Colin got his name. But the story of how the arrogant young Satanta became the probably best known hero on Ireland has barely started. If you like this video, please leave a thumbs up, subscribe and ring the bell to be notified when the next part of the legend comes out. See you next time. Slan slan!